Down at the back and cross the bay, uh, the day not too bad after a downpour of rain in the forenoon and the pitch looking reasonably well of course it will come up quite considerably because it's bound to be very heavy as we speak both sets of teams out on the field uh, to our left we have cross the bay Ballamurn and up to the right having their photographs taken at the present time is Owl at the Ballock so quickly we go through the two team selections first of all Owl at the Ballock in goal Paul Dempsey right full back John Stamp full back Declan Stamp and left full back Tomas Dunn the half back line on the right RJ Blake in the centre Liam Dunn and on the left Robert Dunn centre of the field the two Johns John Cleary number 8 and John Roster the half forward line on the right Jonathan Maiden in the centre Pierce Redmond and on the left Martin Storey and the full forward line at number 13 Martin Redmond, full forward Martin Dempsey and top of the left Sean Dunn. The cross the big Ballamurn team who of course successfully defeated the uh, Fight Harriers in the quarter final. Uh, uh, their team uh, briefly older as I say defeated Rapparees in their uh, quarter final game. Now we'll go to the cross the big team in goal Eamon Cullen. Right full back Fairley Cummins, full back Paul Dempsey and left full back Jimmy White the captain of the team. The half back line on the right Brian O'Connor in the centre nine McDonald on the left Billy Kyo. At centre of the field Lara O'Leary and Larry White. The half forward line on the right, Michael Chickens in the centre, Dermot McDonald and on the left, Paul Cullen. And the full forward line, number 13, Michael Doyle, full forward, Kieran McDonald and top of the left, MJ Scallion. The referee for today's game, of course, no, needs no introduction whatsoever. Brian White, the man who has taken charge of many inter-county games, including the recent All-Ireland Senior Football semi-final between Down and Cork. He also took care of one of the quarter-final senior hurling games as well. More noted, I suppose, as a football referee, but equally as good as a hurling referee. Uh, so uh, everything set in motion for what uh, we're hoping will be a cracking hurling semi-final, uh, little or no breeze, so uh, we'll just await for the development. The Wexford Senior Hurling semi-final beyond both sets of teams lined out in the centre of the field. I say Brian White is uh, the referee for the day and it's a battle of the Johns and the Lars in the middle of the field. You have John Cleary and John Roster for Owlers and then for Bellamore you have Lara O'Leary and Larry White. As I say, it's anybody's guess who's going to win this game, nobody seems too definite as to who's going to win, but whoever will win it will be good for Hurling to see the appearance of Owlert or Cross the Beg in the final. Of course, Owlert has been there in the not-too-distant past. Uh, Cross the Beg, Ballamore, I think, this thing, uh, one of our first ever senior Hurling semi-finals as well in my lifetime anyhow. Uh, backs and forwards, as I say, lined up. Uh, Owlert and Ballack are going to defend the Clonard end, the one to toss. The referee, Brian White, checks his watch. And any moment now, the senior Hurling final will be on. The throwing in the game is on. Stalemate in the centre of the feed. Lara Lear tries to get to a Kieran, Re a Kieran McDonald appears to be starting out in the half forward line we'll follow the play anyhow as the ball is thrown in by John Cleary up there towards Martin Redmond he can't hold on to him. Martin Dempsey with the number 10 playing a full forward swings it across it's a goal oh my god what a tonic of a start there Eamon Cullen caught two minds as Martin Dempsey there seemed to be no problem whatsoever as Martin caught the ball close out to the sideline a speculative lob more so Eamon Cullen must have thought was going over the bar unfortunately for him and for Cross the Bay the ball ended up in the net, it's a goal to no score. Uh, tonic start for out of the ball because Eamon Cullen comes with the puck out. Perhaps a little bit of nervous tension there, the ball breaking down there towards uh, where it's pulled on first time by Robert Dunn, it's Martin Story adding his stick to it. Larry Leary coming there with John Roster. John, a very speedy player with the blue helmet, turns inside, gives it back there towards the uh, centre forward, uh, the Pierce uh, Redmond. As I say, I'm inclined to get these Redmonds mixed up with the ball cleared over there by the centre half back, Nile McDonald. Broken down inside the number 11, Dermot Max, trying to get it into his hand, but it's RJ Blake coming away with it for the Owlert men. He's fouled, it's going to be a free out to Owlert. As I said, a drastic start there for the Ballamurn men. Everybody caught napping from that long speculative lob from Martin Dempsey in the ball ending up in the net. This is the first free of the afternoon, Lean Dunn taking it. He's playing it low inside, coming out there for the cross the big men. It's the number five, Brian O'Connor. The ball blocked down, comes to Lara O'Leary. He's been followed the whole way by Martin Story. Martin pulls one handed. Coming out there towards the sideline, Martin Dempsey being followed by Brian O'Connor again, but Martin Dempsey fails to keep it in play. It's going to be a line ball for the cross of big men. They'll want to be settling fairly quick now after that disastrous start. Brian O'Connor, the Bella Lucas man, the number five on the jersey, of course, cross of big Bellamurn sporting the Mazda logo, the local Mazda dealer, of course, uh, Granlin Motors, as uh, Brian O'Connor comes to take the line ball. It's a good one from Brian. Lobbing there towards Michael Chiggins, the young Wexford minor. The ball up there towards Kieran McDonald, as I say, appears to be operating on the half forward line, but it's grabbed in there by the full back Declan Stamp. Declan gets in his clearance. Going high, Brian O'Connor. He seems to be the man given the task of marking Martin Story. Quite a daunting task in itself. It's the number 21, Jonathan Maiden. He's beaten over there by the number 7, Billy Kyo. The stalemate, nobody getting anywhere. Quick Jonathan Maiden getting the better tussle. Gives it inside towards Martin Dempsey. He's been confronted by Paul Dempsey as he swings the ball in once again. Sean Dunn inside, but this time Eamon Cullen very confident as he comes off his line. 
grabs that ball and puts out towards Liam Dunn. Who misses it? The ball comes towards Steve McDonald. Steve firing it in low towards brother Kieran. He loses it inside. The ball there towards the corner forward. Is it Michael Dyle? No, it's Michael Shiggins under that one. No, Michael Dyle comes back to Michael Dyle, the number 13. Michael don't hold it. It's uh, Robert Dunn getting in the clearance for the outer men there to uh, John Rosser. Paul Cullen tussling away for it down under him. It beats uh, everybody out over the sideline. And it appears it's going to be a line ball through the cross of big Ballamore men. The game beginning to settle, take a bit of a pattern now. Almost three minutes gone and it's a line ball through the cross of big Ballamore men. And it looks like Larry White is going to take it. No, it's the number five, Brian O'Connor, moving way up the field to take this line ball. On the 45 metre line, it's a good ball inside. It's uh, the number 13 trying to grab it there, but it's clear by Tomas Dunn. Brian O'Connor under the game with Martin Story. Story flicks it down to his stick. And as quick as you can say, Martin Story fires this one in. Eamon Cullen under again. This time he gets a hand to it, but this time it goes off his hand and out over the end line for a 65. Conditions are very greasy, of course, and not helping at all, and not helping the confidence of any goalkeeper because, as I said, the ball is so greasy, and when he put up his hand that time, the ball was liable to go anywhere, and where it did go was out over the end line for a 65, and Liam Don coming to take it. Tom Ledger, the lines ran over on the far side, just indicating to Liam where he wants this 65 taken from. Liam, I'm sure, will have a point on his mind as he lines this one up. Almost four minutes to play gone as Liam lifts and strikes, but he hasn't got the direction at all. Is the ball kept in by Brother Shaw? No, just beats him out over the sideline. Uh, the cornerback Jimmy White was in a close pursuit there. The cornerback for across the big of uh, four is lining out on this near side and two over on the far side. Lots of positional switches. We'll just follow the play anyhow as Eamon Cullen takes the poke over there on the far side. It's uh, the number 10 there, Michael Shiggins, trying to get the ball for Ballamore, but he's beaten to it. The ball played inside Martin Redman out there. But he's beaten to by uh, Fairley Cummins. Uh, it's Martin Story in possession again once again for Rowlert. And the referee says on this occasion, Martin, you held on too long. It's going to be a free out for Cross the Bay. The crowd not quite liking that decision, but Brian White right on the spot. Niall McDonald going to take the free. Niall lifts and strikes, keeps it low. Up towards Brother D, who fails to control it. Liam Dunn pulls it along the ground. The ball over there on this near side of the field. Brian O'Connor covering off as Martin Story comes to him. Brian Martin Story loses his hurl, tries to get up into his hand, football style. The ball towards Sean Dunn. He's been surrounded by three outlet men. He gives it back to Brother Liam, pressing up into the attack. Liam shoots and has Liam got a point he has. A great point for Albert and Liam Dunn there. Liam moving right up into the attack, only about 50 yards out from the cross the big goal as he sent that one straight between the posts. Five minutes almost gone, it's one goal and one for the Owl of the Ballock men. Cross the big Ballamurn still await their first score. Crossabeg will be anxious to get on the scoreboard fairly quickly now and not to let Owlard run away with the game as the number nine. Uh, John Rosser pulls on that ball, it doesn't go very far. Lara Leary under. Lara trying to get it up towards the end of uh, Several players on the ground there as the ball set inside. But it's the number seven for the Owlard, the Ballock man, Tomas Dunn, operating a cornerback, of course. The ball there towards Larry White in the middle of the field. Lara Leary down injured as uh, the Owlard men try to press home another attack. Jonathan Maiden but coming out, Brian O'Connor. But the ball breaks clear again, the number 17 there. For uh, the Ireland men, these numbers are a little bit off-putting at the present time. We'll follow the play over there. Billy Kyo trying to gain possession. Sean Dunn in hot pursuit. Sean going way over to the far side. He swings this one in. Where's it going to go? It looks a great shot. It's uh, gone wide. Martin Dempsey trying his best to keep the ball in possession. But unfortunately, it didn't succeed. So the ball went out over the end line and wide. As I said, the numbers are a little bit uh, misleading. The number 18 is Robert Dunn. The number 17 is Pierce Redmond, the centre forward. Just trying to figure all that one out as Eamon Cullen comes to take the puck out. Over on the far side, Larry White tries to get Dearman McDonald there, but it's Liam Dawn coming away with it. Then followed the whole way by Michael Chiggins. Liam gone on a good solo run. Gives the ball inside to Jonathan Maiden, a late tackle. But the referee playing good advantage. The ball is swung in there to Martin Redman, and Martin makes no mistake whatsoever. It's another point for the Owlet men. The Owlet men rampant at this, in this early stage of the game. One goal and two points after six and a half minutes of play. And across the big men still awaiting their first score. Just the kind of start that the cross of big men didn't need. An injury over there on the far side of the field. I think it was Jonathan Maiden took a rather heavy knock as he got that ball into Martin Redman, but the referee applying good advantage and the ball went over the bar. <laughs> referee Brian White says, we get home with the game as Eamon Cullen comes to take the puck out once again. 1-2 to no score, seven minutes almost gone. Lara O'Leary and John Ross in the middle of the field. Lara goes high but can't hold it. It's pulled on there by uh, number 17, uh, Pierce Redmond. The ball up there towards Paul Cullen. Larry Leary in there as well. The ball coming up to the corner forward. The number 13, Michael Doyle. Michael is around to Moss Dunn. He's gone away on a solo. Gives a good ball to Larry Leary. Larry trying to get inside his man. He's been followed the whole way by John Rosser. Larry swings it right across the goal. It's a good ball. Owned safely. Feel inside by Paul Dempsey. That was a good save by Paul. It was his first touch of the 
ball and it was a good shot but he took it covertly into his chest comes to the number 21 over there as I said the number is a little bit misleading we followed the play and he has Larry White pulls on this ball inside towards Kieran McDonald and a very heavy pull there from Declan Stamp and the referee Brian White in quick to sort that one out but that was a very heavy knock he's having a quiet word with Declan Stamp and telling him to cool things down a little bit this should be cross the big Balmerns first score almost eight minutes gone in the game and it's young Michael Doyle, the man who's going to take the free. Michael, of course, the son of the legendary Michal Doyle, well known, of course, in GA circles, very much involved in the Bellamur and Cross of Eggs set up as Michael faces up to his first free in this county semi final. And there's the first point for Cross of Egg in a senior hurling championship semi final for as long as I can remember. Anyhow, there's a little over eight minutes gone. It's 1 2 to Albert the Ballock, and it's a point for Cross of Egg Bellamur. Paul Dempsey, and I do believe this is going to be his first book out. It's the first time the ball has crossed that end line at that side of the field from the Clonard end. Pooks down the left flank here towards Martin Story and Brian O'Connor. Lara O'Leary reaching back, going high, but only succeeds in breaking the ball down to Martin Story. Martin tried to get away on a solo run. Gives it inside to John Roster, who wasn't quite expecting that one. He's been followed the whole way by Niall MacDonald. The ball over there towards Jonathan Maiden. John trying to get up, gets it into Martin uh, Redmond. Martin strikes again, but on this occasion, it swings to the right and swings wide. So it's 1-2 to 1 point, as uh, goalkeeper Raymond Cullen comes for the puck out again, out towards the Mac McDonald, he's playing very deep at the present time, the ball there towards Brother Nile, he can't hold out to Brian O'Connor, pulls it on the ground, it's the number 6, Liam down way up in an attacking position for the Ireland men, he fires this one inside, uh, Jimmy White going there with Sean Dunn, Jimmy can't control it and just succeeds in kicking it out over the end line, it's going to be a 65 to the Ireland men. As I said, Liam Dunn playing very far up the field and already after having a point and now lining up another 65. Larry Malone just indicating to Liam where he was the 65 to be taken from his best 10 15 yards in from the sideline down here in Anders. Liam wasn't successful with his last one and went over the end line and wide. This time in a fairly favourable position as he lifts and strikes. Is she going to go the whole way? Eamon Cullen goes down. It's going to be a free out of square ball. Martin Dempsey was the player there uh, inside in the small square as himself and Paul Dempsey had a little difference of opinion, but everything sorted out now and Brian White blowing the whistle for a free out to the Bellamore men. The Owlet men of course starting in lightning fashion with that early goal after 30 seconds but uh, the cross big men begin to settle a little bit more now as the ball is added to in the centre field by Larry White but it comes to Liam Dunn. Liam swinging it over towards Martin Redman. Fairly comes in close pursuit as Martin gets his hook in towards the other Martin. Martin Dempsey but Paul Dempsey the cross big full back was there and he succeeded in rooting it out over the sideline over on the far side of the field. It's going to be a line ball to the Owlert men and uh, is it John Cleary the man who's going to take it? No, he's decided to leave it to Jonathan Maiden. Jonathan, a very young player, one of the underage stars of the Owlert set up. The ball played inside, Sean Dunn inside, but Eamon Cullen very quick to react there and uh, that could have been ever so dangerous for across the big men again as Sean Dunn was left more or less all on his own. Jimmy White was, uh, I don't know exactly where he was, but wherever he was, it was a lucky escape for the across the big men as Sean Dunn was right in under that one. Liam Dunn going to take this 65 again. Owlert really piling on the pressure in these early stages as the ball comes towards uh, number 17, uh, Pierce Redman. Oh, and the ball comes back off the upright, Paul Dempsey pulling very hard there, a hand on the back, Martin Story fouling Paul Dempsey on that occasion. It's going to be a free out to the cross of big men. But as I say, the cross of big defence is a little behind sixes and sevens in this early stage. And Pierce Redman, a little bit unlucky perhaps that that ball should come back off the upright, but that's the way it remains anyhow, 1-2 to a point. As Eamon Cullen prepares to take the free out for the cross of big men. It's a good one from him, and the ball must be like a, a bar of soap as it's added to in the air by uh, the centre forward, Dermot McDonald. The ball over there on the other corner, on a heavy pull from an Ireland man again, but to get away with John Stamp who gets in this clear, so it's John Cleary. Lara O'Leary breaks down, but it comes to Liam Dunn. What a great game he's having so far. A lovely ball into uh, brother Sean, who appears now to have moved out onto the half forward line. He's been followed the whole way by Brian O'Connor. He gives it to the centre story, he's away on the solo run. He's about 30 yards out, he won't make a mistake. Uh, he has, he has, oh, a terrible mistake there. A terrible bad miss from Martin Story. That was one of these chances where it was sort of wrapped in, shall we say, a fancy paper to really set up for Martin. But uh, unfortunately, from his point of view, it was a very bad miss indeed. So it remains one goal and two to one point. Twelve minutes gone in this first half. The ball there where Lara O'Leary beaten to it again by John Ross. So far, John's been winning that 
uh, a lot of possession over there, as has Martin uh, Redmond over on the far corner for the Owl men. This time he decides to keep it low to Martin Dempsey. The Owl of Forward combining well. Paul Dempsey in close pursuit is Martin Pleasant inside. Jimmy White coming out there with Martin Story. And Jimmy, nobody quite holding it. Owl will try to press home another attack with the number seven, Billy Kyo, rooting it out. Story still in possession on the 21 yard line. This time he swings it in and Martin as if to make up for that earlier miss. A very fine point from a very acute angle from Martin Story. 12 and a half minutes gone, one goal in three for Owl of the Ballock, one point for Cross the Big Ballamurn. A lovely grand point there from Martin Story, but it was a ball that the Cross the Big Ballamurn defence should have had cleared. They're a little bit unsteady in these early stages. Damon Cullen with the puck out towards Kieran, McDonald and leans on, brace between them. The number 10, Michael Chickas, plays his side. Here goes Stephen McDonald now, there's a chance out here for Ballamurn, he shoots low. Oh, what a great save from Paul Dempsey! And whipping that ball up off his stick over the bar. But that was a great save by Paul Dempsey as Dermot McDonald bore down on goal. It was a blistering shot and an equally effective save from Paul Dempsey. So it's one, two, one, three to two points, four points separating the sides. Just goes to show how dangerous cross the bacon can be in a quick move. The ball there breaking down Billy Kyo, back all on his own. Wins possession for the cross the big man. He's been followed the whole way by Pierce. Uh, Redmond, it's a bad ball back. It comes to the number two, uh, Fairley Cummins, and it's uh, Owler. Again, winning back that ball rather easily. Martin Redmond springs it across where Martin Story succeeds in keeping it in play. He's been followed the whole way by Jimmy White. He's still got possession. He's trying to make room for himself. He swings it in and he's got another point. It's amazing how easy Martin Story can make it look. But every time he gets the ball, there's a score more or less on for the outer men. But again, another mistake with the cross of big Ballamorton men. A ball that Billy Kiosk should have had cleared. He decided to give it back towards Fairley Cummins. Fairly wasn't quite expecting it, and now they're capitalising on it again. 1 4 to 2 points, 14 minutes gone. The ball there does the big centre forward, Kieran McDonald. Kieran plays a good ball inside. They're staying there as Dean McDonald tries to break it out. D operating in the full forward position. Been followed the whole way by uh, Declan Stamford again. D taking advantage and slipping over another point to keep Cross the Big well in contention. One goal and 4 to 3 points. Just 4 points separating the sides, and there's 14 and a half minutes almost gone. Cross the bag, of course, with Kieran Mack. Of course, his height and physique, uh, they intend to upset uh, Liam Dunn and Kieran, a very big man to dispossess when he gets the ball. The ball played low in towards the centre of the field, towards Larry White and John Cleary. Breaks between them is the number 10, Michael Chicken, winning possession for the cross the bag man. Breaks inside where D. McDonald again gets the better Declan Stamp. He's trying to get around him. He decides to play it back, but where he was playing it to, nobody knows. It comes to an on Mark Jonathan Maiden, who just succeeds in sending it to his immediate opponent, Billy Kill. Billy slips it inside towards MJ Scallion. The ball there again where it's won by Michael Doyle. Michael swings it in, Paul Dempsey under it, handling it safely as Paul Cullen in hot pursuit. And Paul decides to clear it without taking it into his hand at all. Up towards John Rosser, Lara O'Leary battling away with him. But the ball comes to John Rosser. An attempted hook by Lara O'Leary doesn't work out. Billy Kyo back with deep possession for cross the bag. Billy slipping it in there towards the number 10, Michael Chiggins. He's been followed the whole way by RJ Blake. The ball over on the far side. Back towards Lean Don. Lean can't hold it. Gives it back towards RJ again. RJ swinging up towards Jonathan Maiden. Billy Cole successfully defending for cross The ball blocked down over there by John Cleary. It's got over the sideline over on the far side. And who's this line ball? It's to uh, cross the big Ballamurn. There's an injured player down here in Andrews on this uh, near side. Is it Paul Cullen? No, it's Larry Leary was the man who was offended. Dr. Stephen Bow, of course, the Wexford uh, team doctor. In there, just have a quick look. The nine ball over on the far side, Billy Kyo, the man who's going to take it with the blue. The tie heavily strapped with a blue bandage over there on the stand side of the field as the rain comes pelting down again but as I say little or no breeze so perhaps apart from the underfoot conditions not all that bad a day it's a very good ball from Billy played inside D McDonald pulling very high again but coming out there some off stone tidying up at the back for the outer man gives it to Jonathan Maiden Jonathan swinging it across towards Sean Dunn now operating a half forward where's the number five Brian O'Connor coming away Martin Story trying to get him out of the game but the ball is still there where it's uh, Larry White or Brian O'Connor over on the far side, a little bit of aggro going on off the ball. As uh, Ballamurn tried to press home another attack, Michael Doyle swings her in, but this time it swings to the left and wide. Just watching now, uh, where is Martin Story has now gone into corner forward on the outer team, as I say, and Sean Dunn in a direct swap out on the half forward line. Quite an amount of changes in both sides, I don't know what kind of a tactic this is, but we'll follow the play anyhow as Paul Dempsey comes with the puck out again. 
The far side towards John Cleary and Larry White. Race between them, Jonathan Might and there with Billy Kyo. Billy winning this one. Giving it up to the number 10 there. Michael Chiggins coming more and more into the game. The Wexham Minor. The ball into D. McDonald again. He's trying to get around Declan Stab. He shoots and has he got another point? He has. Stephen McDonald's dynamite every time he gets the ball. And that's another point for the cross of big men. One four to four points. Just a goal separating the side. 17 and a half minutes gone. As the crowd get on the rain coats again and the caps go on and the umbrellas go up and the rain comes pouring down as the goalkeeper Paul Debsey comes to take the puck out once again. Paul decides to try this side of the field this time. Paul Cullen back in under it there. Has Paul Cullen got the midfield for uh, the cross of big men? We'll follow the play anyhow. Paul Dempsey beating Martin Dempsey through with the ball there towards Jimmy White. Jimmy gets it up where John Ross are having quite an effective game for uh, the cross of big men. But the ball goes back to Martin Dempsey. Martin swings it in and Martin swings it over the bar. One five to four points. Elder with a four point lead again. Just looking to see where has Lara O'Leary gone. Oh, well, Lara O'Leary has actually left the field. Has the substitute come on for Cross the Bay? We'll follow the play anyhow. It seems that Lara O'Leary has left the field. The ball over there on the far side where John Stamp going very high with the corner forward and Jay Scallion. Brace between them is Kira McDonald getting away with the ball for Cross the Bay. He's got soloing right through. He gives a good ball into his brother D. D gets it away. He's cutting in along the ground as he's been followed the whole way there by. Uh, uh, Tomas done in there in hot pursuit, leaned on there as well. Lean decides to pick it up, gives a good ball out towards brother Tomas. Tomas quick to react, grabs that ball there. Across the big operating with 40 men at the present time, a high pull from Nile McDonald. And here's Aldo taking advantage, numerical advantages. Martin Story gets the ball. Martin swings it away, it's going to go to the right of the post. Uh, has it gone wide? It hasn't. The ball there towards Billy Kyo. Billy grabbing it, he's been followed the whole way by Jonathan Mighton. Billy loses the stick, but Jonathan Mighton gets the ball and Jonathan tips it over the bar. Another point there for the Owler, the Ballock men, Jonathan Maiden. But again, it was a case of sort of uh, across the big Ballamore and failing to clear the line. It's a substitute on for Ballamore and it looks like John Cummins. Lara O'Leary mustn't be coming into the game. Back into the game, we'll follow the play The Number 19, as I say, yes, John Cummins, the man it is. As him and Colin comes to take the puck out again. The rain comes pouring down. It is lobs there towards Kieran McDonald and Liam Dunn. It's between them, John Stamp pulls, he can't quite make any progress, the ball coming away, Lean done, Lean trying to root it up into his hand, he succeeds, he's been followed by two cross big men, he gives it in to John Cleary, John left handed into the centre, Story under it there with Jimmy White, Brace between him, Sean Dunn all on his own, here's a goal chance for the other men, it must be, Martin does his shoot, oh and Martin unbelievably put the wide, oh an absolute sitter of a miss there from Martin Dempsey, great work there, but unfortunately for the other men, they didn't capitalise with a score. Yeah, okay. Another terrible miss there from the Owlert men as uh, the ball poked out and that would have been a chance for Owlert to build up a commanding lead. John Roster pulls on the ball, reaching high there, Niall McDonald, he can't hold it, Paul Cullen goes back to it. John Roster is there again, coming up is uh, the number 17, Pierce Redman. Pierce gives it inside towards the number 9, John Roster, fails to control on this time and it's Brian O'Connor coming. Brian loses possession but wins it back again, but the ball only goes back as far as Martin Dempsey. Martin swings it in again and this one swings to the left and wide. Howlard having quite a few misses now, but really that chance from Martin Redmond was an unbelievable, or from Martin Dempsey, an unbelievable miss. So it's still 1 6 to 4 points. That's 9 points to 4, a 5 points lead for the Howlard men. 21 minutes almost gone. Eamon Cullen with the puck is around the centre of the field there, and conditions absolutely appalling for Hurland now as Jonathan Maiden wins possession, but he's beaten to it by Michael Chiggins, who now appears to have gone back to the half back line. Some high pulling inside. The number 15, MJ Scallion and John Stamp having a little difference of opinion there. It's going to be a line ball and it looks like it's to the cross of Big Ballamurn then. John Cummins now operating at half forward. Paul Cullen down the middle of the field for cross the Big Ballamurn to replace Lara O'Leary who's gone off injured. A line ball over on the far side. Billy Kyo takes it. Plays it side towards Michael Doyle. He's been followed there by the number four for uh, the uh, Tomas Dunn in Pursuit there as the ball comes to D. McDonald again. He's winning every ball inside. On this occasion, the referee says that D. McDonald overcarried, so it's going to be a free out to the outer of the ballot man. But every time D. McDonald gets possession, he really causes panic in the outer defence. Is Paul Dempsey coming all the way from goal to take this one? No. He leaves it to Liam Dunn instead. Liam strikes not a very high one. Paul Cullen blocks it down the middle of the field. Paul gets possession. He's away on a solo run. Been followed the whole way. Robert Dunn there in hot pursuit. And this time it's going to be a free, I'd imagine, to the cross of big men for a chop down there 
by uh, Robert Dunn and who's going to take the free is Michael Doyle coming out now, Nine McDonald coming up from centre half back to take this one. 22 minutes gone, 8 minutes left in the first half. Backs and forwards in around the square, Kieran McDonald in there as well, Niall, it's a good ball for Niall, it's over the bar, a good point there for Niall McDonald from a free, one six to five points, four points separates the sides again. Paul Dempsey in no great hurry, Brian White shoots on the whistle, play will continue as Paul takes the puck over the far side, Billy Keogh in under the dropping ball there, it breaks towards uh, the number 17, Pierce Redman, but it's Jonathan Maiden who gets possession, he's been followed by Michael Chiggins, Michael of course the young Wexford miner, he scored two points against Offaly in the Leinster semi-final, operating at wing forward on that occasion, the ball, no he was wing back on that occasion, he's that wing forward today but now moved back to wing back, as the ball is cleared by Michael Chiggins, up towards Dermot McDonald, Dermot trying to get into his hand, he succeeds, what a game he's having, if the Wexford management new setup is here, I'm sure he'll feature very prominently in their plans as the ball is whipped away there, towards this is uh, the number three Declan stamp with the ball one, there by uh, the corner forward, uh, Michael Doyle, but it wasn't a good uh, ball by him. The ball inside towards Robert Dunn, but it's the number 19, John Cummins. John can't hold on to it either, it comes back to Robert Dunn again. Robert under pressure gets in his clearance, it's not a good ball. It's Niall McDonald covering off for the cross of big men. A sidestep on Pierce Redmond as he puts that ball up towards John Cummins again. Declan Stamp pulling very high in the air, the ball towards Robert Dunn again. But Robert can't hold it either, as I say, the ball more like a bar of soap as the ball towards John Cummins. It breaks there, nobody quite getting in possession. Declan Stamp pulling lots of room out there as uh, Elders help another attack. Jonathan Maiden over towards the right corner towards Martin Redmond again. Martin swinging it in, but this time it's a poor ball. It's going to break down, but uh, Eamon Cullen decides to let it hop out over the end line. I don't know if that's exactly what he had in mind, but that's what happened anyhow. I thought first he was going to gather, but it just went harmlessly over the end line and wide. One six to five points, just four points up race to side. 24 minutes gone. Across a big goal would really set this game alight as John Roster hurling very well at midfield. Gives the ball in towards Sean Dunn. Been followed the whole way by Paul Cullen. Paul still going, a little chop down there by Paul Cullen. It's going to be a free to uh, Dowler the Ballock men. Of course, Paul would know all about uh, frees and so forth because Paul Cullen himself, of course, also a referee. He took charge of the under 21 hurling Premier final. I think it was last year and he'd be no stranger to the referee's whistle. It's going to be a free in to the Dowler men, anyhow. And I think this is one of their first. Uh, Close in freeze of the day, Sean Dunn has been very prolific in his free taking so far this year and here's his first chance today. A silence emerges over Wexford Park as Sean looking for a quick one perhaps. Rather an orthodox style of taking a free as he lifts the ball and strikes and sends it straight over the bar, no mistake whatsoever. Almost over the black spot, one seven to five points. Howlard enjoy a five point lead. A five point lead. As the ball comes towards the centre of the field again, Pierce Redmond under the ball, broken down by Larry White. Some good hurling there by Michael Chiggins, playing very well since he moved back to the left half back position. A line ball over there on the far side to Howlard and John Stamp. A little bit out from the 45 metre line, Tom Ledger just Showing him exactly where he wants the sideline ball taken from as John throws away a flag and sends a very good line ball down there towards Niall McDonald who can't hold on to it. Martin Redmond pulling but some good covering again. What a fine game Michael Chiggins is having since he moved back to that left half back position. A lovely flick in the air by D. McDonald. Kieran Mack now gone into the full forward position but on that occasion now just that little bit too far. As the ball comes towards Brian O'Connor. He's another Ballamurn player having a very good game as he comes away with that ball. He's been followed the whole way by uh, Pierce Redmond. And the ball beating uh, Brian O'Connor out over the sideline down here. And there's going to be a line ball to Howard. Robert Dunn there, whether Robert is going to take it or not. John Roster there as well. But Robert Dunn decides he's going to take it. Robert, of course, not a brother of Liam Thomas and Sean. I think he is distantly related. That's the line ball. taking a very good one. But it's going to come to uh, completely on March. Jimmy White. He's followed the whole way by Martin Story. He gets his clearance under pressure. He's going to go over the sideline again. It has. Tommy Kerwin, the Owlard and as they were there, of course, Tommy, well-known referee himself, a man who's taken charge of two senior hurling finals to see yesterday, was also involved in a Keogh Cup final up in County Westmead, or that Tommy, travelling to Lent Britain, Ireland, of course, in his refereeing due, he says the line ball is taken by the number 15, Sean Dunn, it's Billy Keogh on the drop, but gets it into his hand again, the ball there towards John Cleary, Larry White with him, exchanges at midfield rather, even as uh, Martin Redmond comes to the ball again, but on this occasion it's Faley Cummins covering back, he's tackled, he tries to get it into his hand, 
as I said the ball really like a bar of soap as it comes back to Michael Shiggins Michael under pressure gets his clearance out out there towards the number 7 Billy Kyo with Martin Debsey now way out on the half forward line the ball back towards Liam Dunn but Owler really pushing up the field on every occasion they can get the ball inside towards Martin Redmond but uh, winning possession there is a Paul Dempsey for the Ballamore men now number 2 Faley Cummins but the ball returned just as quick and uh, that one went wide on that occasion I wasn't quite sure who struck us so uh, thankfully it didn't go over the bar so we didn't really miss anything there as I say I wasn't sure who struck that ball I was watching play inside but it remains 17 to 5 points 27 and a half minutes gone 2 and a half plus a little bit of added on time as Eamon Cullen takes the puck again really this game badly needs a cross a big goal to get the game alive as Liam down wins possession gives it over on the far side to John Cleary John keeps it low on this occasion Martin Dempsey going to it Jimmy White out with him the ball breaks back to the full back Paul Dempsey Paul doesn't succeed in clearing it but roots it out comes back there where the ball slides inside towards Martin Story. Martin running with Faley Cummins in hot pursuit Martin close to the sideline making good angle for himself as he rounds uh, Faley Cummins he sends it in oh and the ball comes back I'm not sure if it hit the goalkeeper or the crossbar Martin Dempsey swings it back again Martin Redmond shoots what a great save from Eamon Cullen a great save there as he came out with that ball and wins the free out but that was a tremendous save I'm not sure whether he got to the first one or not perhaps it was the crossbar but he definitely got to the second one a fantastic save there from Eamon Cullen of course many people are tipping Eamon Cullen to be Eamon Cullen to be involved in the Wexford set up in the not too distant future and now with a new management team at the helm I suppose he will be considered along with everybody else that's shown good form Eamon takes the puck comes to around midfield Billy Kyo under it there also there is the number 8 John Cleary the ball beats everybody Kieran Mack going to it with Liam Dunn but it's John Stamp uh, covering up at the back for Aula gets it up towards Sean Dunn he's been followed by Brian O'Connor but Sean gets it he swings in a good ball this is going to break inside story inside and the goalkeeper Eamon Cullen succeeds in uh, uh, just luckily that went out to stick a Martin Story, but that could have been ever so dangerous for the cross the big men. Martin Story stealing away from everybody there was inside to contest the ball with him and Cullen, but thankfully from across the big viewpoint the ball just broke off Martin Story's hurl out over the end line and wide. Eamon and Cullen with the puck out again. He's been a very busy goalkeeper and a very good one apart from the early lap. The puck out towards John Stamp. He can't hold on to it. It's cross the big trying to set up another attack. Kieran McDonald in there, the ball kicked in by MJ Scallion, who was cleared out along the ground by Tomas Dunn. They're still tussling away over on the far side. It's John Stamp with the white helmet. John all on his own as he's confronted by Larry White. Gets the ball out. He's going to be everybody over the sideline he has over on the far side. A line ball to cross the big Ballamurn and Niall McDonald. I'm sure the man is going to take it. About 50 yards out from his own goal, a little bit more. Niall taking plenty of care and attention with this one as he tees it up. Down on his knees and... Now, of course, uh, ever present in the Wexford Senior Hurling Panel over the past few years as the ball is broken inside Kieran McDonald trying to get the better of uh, who was over on the far side, leading down. The ball won over there, a good ball whipped in by D. McDonald again. Here's a chance of a goal, John Cummins. He shouts and he's got it. A goal for Cross the Big Ballamore, but that really came from nothing. It was all engineered, shall we say, or organised outside on the wing where Dermot McDonald with the ball over across, and now this puts Cross the Big right back into the game, and this is just what this game needed to set the light. 1-7 to 1-5, Brian White blows the half-time whistle, 30 and a half minutes gone, I thought he would have given a little bit more of that at on time, but he doesn't, and really this game has come alive now, just two points separating the sides here, in this 1994 County Senior Hurling semi-final, at half-time it's out at the Ballock, 1-7, across the big Ballamore in 1-5. Yeah. Howard re-emerging for the start of the second half, just looking through the teams there to see if there are any changes Paul no Lara O'Leary doesn't seem to have reappeared for uh, across the big Ballamore of course he went off in the first half he'd be bitterly disappointed I'm sure he was looking forward very much to today's game of course Lara's sister Marion was operating with the Wexford Camogie team last Sunday as was Fiona Dunn of course the sister Aline and Sean and Tomas and they were all there cheering on the sisters unfortunately Wexford didn't get a win on the day the both sides here today would be very anxious get a win of course and to go on to meet either Ratney or St Martins in the County Senior Hurling Final my apologies to Noel Whelan the linesman down here under me I thought early on it was Tom Ledger it's Noel Whelan of course a man who's refereed many county finals at both football and hurling level and also an inter-county referee of course Brian White checks on his watch Paul Cullen in the middle of the field the second half is on and now we're first to break away it's John Roster pulling on that ball up there 
Well, it's grabbed by the number 17, Pierce Redmond. Howler with a new set of jerseys for the start of this second half. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult again. As the goalkeeper uh, failed to hold it there, Eamon Cullen, but uh, he was quick to get out to Faley Cummins and Faley reacting rather quickly up towards brother John. But it's John Roster who wins possession for the element. Lost to the sideline. Is it gone over? It's not. The ball coming towards Jonathan Maiden. Very well hooped there by the number 19, John Cummins. But the ball coming back to RJ Blake. RJ swings it in. Martin Dempsey inside. But the ball goes out over the end line and wide. Sean Dunn over there across as well. Owler, as I say, with new jerseys on him for the start of the second half. 38 seconds gone in the second half. It's still one goal and seven to one goal and five. Eamon Cullen slipped a little bit there a few moments ago and it might have been the start of the second half, the same as the first. As D. McDonald now operating at centre forward at the present time as the ball is pulled down by John Roster over there towards Martin Redmond. Martin tried to get it up and followed the whole way by Fairley Cummins. Fairley blocks him down on this occasion. A good clearance from Fairley up on the ground. John Stamp coming towards us. He's been followed there by Andres Canyon, but it's Liam Dunn. Quickest to react, grabs that ball and clears under pressure. Over there towards the far side, towards Pierce Redmond. Pierce away on the solo run, gives a good ball inside to Martin Story. Martin, 45 metres out. Martin swings in, but Martin sends it wide. Still two points up the side. a good chance there for Martin Story, but on that occasion, his accuracy let him down. Eamon Cullen in the all green jersey. Black bottoms as he comes to take the took out over towards the stand side of the field. Billy Kyo is up there now, of course, operating a half forward in a direct switch with uh, Michael Chickas and Steve McDonald. Swings the ball across again. Coming out there for uh, out of the small stone. Small swings forward the whole way by Kieran McDonald, but he still gets a good clearance in after the long solo run. The ball up towards Martin, that's his better way. Nine McDonald pulls along the ground. Up there where adding to it in the centre of the field, Larry White. We're getting it again to Tomas Dunn. Tomas clearing some good ball under pressure there. The ball over on the far side towards Robert Dunn. But it's Dean McDonald making plenty of room for himself as it comes to Kieran McDonald. And a bad knock there for Kieran McDonald. It's going to be a free into the outlet man, or to the cross of big man. Kieran down injured for the moment there as Brian White goes over to have a look. Brian, of course, the Racker Road Christian Stand Club man played quite an amount of hurling and football and was successful in winning intermediate football and hurling with the Christian Town Club. Also, I think, appeared in a county senior hurling quarter final, if not semi final against Buffer Alley a few seasons back. It's going to be a free. There was a, a new hurling ball thrown in there rather quickly by the Cross the Bag mentors, but uh, referee Brian Weiss very quick to it. It's going to be a free into Cross the Bag. Is this going to be the first score of the second half? Michael Doyle, the man who's going to take it, the Bella Lucas man. The rain momentarily stopped as Michael swings her in, and Michael swings her wide. So it remains 1 7 to 1 5. They've had a wide each in the second half. Paul Dempsey coming to take the puck. Paul making one outstanding save in the first half, as did Eamon Cullen, of course, in the cross of goal as well. Two points separates the side as Paul, in no great hurry at all, puts this one straight down the centre. Between Martin Story and Nile McDonald, it appears now like Martin has gone to centre forward with Nile McDonald, winning possession easily there. Swings this one in. Where's it going to go? Way to the right and wide. A bad race the ball there for Niall McDonald. He gained possession very well. As I say, it now looks like Martin Story has gone to centre forward. Martin Delsey is back in at full forward. And the original uh, centre forward, Pierce Redman, now appears to be gone on the wing. The puck out is taken. Over towards uh, Larry White and uh, the number 20 there. I'd imagine that must be John Cleary. There must have been no number 8 in the last jerseys as the ball played down where Liam Down wins possession. Up there towards Martin Story, the centre forward. He tried to get around Niall McDonald, but good defending by Niall. Holds it up. The ball out towards John Roster. Fairly coming. Worst the size he come, then he wouldn't. The ball played inside towards Martin Dessie. Oh, and here's a chance. Sean Dunn. Oh, but good defender from the ball of Murren men there. Sean Dunn looked like he was in there. Paul Cullen, working very deep with the cross of big men, gets the ball into his hand. Under pressure, the ball back down. It's going to be a line ball to the cross of big men. John Roster doing very well to block that one down. But again, the cross of big defence at sixes and sevens, and Sean Dunn very near. Creeping in again for another goal. It's going to be a line ball to the cross the big man and Fairly Cummins, the man who's going to take it. I better throw Ballamurn in there as well. We can't be saying cross the big afternoon all afternoon or Ballamurn won't be quite pleased. So it's cross the big Ballamurn with Fairly Cummins with the line ball. He misses it. He can't hit it again now as the ball comes to the number 10, Michael Chiggins. There's a narrow player down into there. I didn't see what happened. We'll follow the play anyhow. Dearman McDonald goes high. By old first time along the ground. Up there into the corner towards uh, Michael Doyle. Michael tried to keep it in play. He succeeds. He's been followed the whole way over there. There's a number 22 now on the Owler team. Number 22, according to this, is Alan O'Connor. But I presume, again, it's uh, 
Ormond. Wrong, wrong jersey said. There's a substitute coming on now. James Ormond coming into the outer team. We'll just watch to see is it Pierce Redmond, the man who's going off, or is it John Cleary? As I said, the number's going a little bit astray. It's uh, Robert Dunn, it appears the player has gone off. We'll follow the play anyhow. Elwood appearing on the James field Robert now. Dunn. As uh, over there on the far side, James Ormond tries to get involved, but it's Larry White. Across the bay, coming more and more into the game. Larry pulling again. It's Larry O'Leary back in the game. I didn't know him arrive out at the start of the second half, but he's definitely there. As the ball comes towards, is it Michael Doyle over there? And Michael brings it in. And as Michael got it over the bar, he has a great point there for the bottom run men. 1-7 to 1-6, just a point separates the sides. I don't know who's gone off or what's happened here, but Larry O'Leary is definitely back in the team. Uh, Paul Cullen is there, Michael Doyle is there. Is MJ Scallion. No, MJ Scallion is still there as well. We'll follow the play anyhow as the ball comes towards the centre field. Towards Martin Story, Nile McDonald. He beats them all again. Coming back, Michael Chicken. Michael slow to get rid of this one. Gives it up to Larry White. Larry appeared to be fair, but he still wins possession. He gives it out there. Stalemate in the centre of the field. Larry White coming in again. James Ormond pulled it on the ground. Cuts to Paul Cullen. Paul decides to pull it on the ground again. Has a very heavy pull from D. McDonald there. Referee a little bit late in blowing that one. He appeared to be playing the ball, but the referee said no, it's going to be a free. It was a pull across the legs of Liam Dunn. It's going to be a free out for Dowlett, man. Over there on the far side of number 20. There, Philip Rosser. There's a number 20 for Owlers. I don't know if that's Philip Rosser or not. Perhaps it is. Uh, as I said, it changed jerseys at the start of the second half. And I know Liam Dunn is taking the free, but there's number 20 over on the far side. It looks like John Rosser's brother Philip will follow the play anyhow as Liam Dunn takes it. And Liam pops it over the bar. A great point there for Liam Dunn and Owlers to give him back the two point advantage again. Seven minutes gone in this second half. James Ormond is in the game anyhow after replacing Robert Dunn for Owlers and as I say I'm not sure is that Philip Rossler over at left half back on the far side. We'll follow the play anyhow as D. McDonald goes high again, Liam Dunn coming to it. The ball back towards D again, appear to be a chop down there from James Ormond, Larry White under the ball. He pulls and misses the ball that inside, Larry O'Leary, Michael Doyle out, he's got a great point just a few minutes ago. He's been followed the whole time over on the far side, the number 22 there. Again as I said the numbers game is going all a little bit. Crazy as the ball comes to D. McDonald. Some very heavy pulling inside there and a little bit of a war breaking out. Quite an amount of heavy pulling. D. McDonald again pulled a bit late. The ball had gone over the sideline over on the far side. It's, I'm sure the referee will there'll be the name. D. McDonald perhaps could be going into the referee's book here. I'm not sure. A very late pull. When play will resume, will it be for a line ball? Or will it be a throw-in ball? Johnny Murphy, the former inter-county hurler in there with a few words to uh, Brian White. I'm not quite sure what they're all about. But, uh, John Stamp is there. Is Declan Stamp in the Owler team? There's a number 22. Uh, there's no Owler man around. To That's John Stamp as cornerback. I don't seem to see Declan Stamp. There's a number 20. Yeah, John Stamp is on. There's a number 22. A 22 over on the far side. We'll follow the play anyhow. It's a throw-in ball. Larry O'Leary gets the better of it. In there towards the big full forward. Kieran McDonald whips it across the goal. MJ Scallion goes to the ball. MJ trying to keep it in play. Kieran McDonald still there. He's on the ground. Trying to get it in his hand. John Stamp around him. The ball goes out. It's going to be a 65 to the cross the big man. Kieran McDonald having a word with Brian White there. He's not quite satisfied. What's happened? It's going to be a 65 when play will resume. The referee going in to have a word with his linesman. Is the referee overruling or is it a 65? It seems the referee has overruled him. Brian's been known to do this from time to time, but the umpire in fairness seem to be fairly well up with the thing there, but anyhow, it's given us a wide. It's 1-8 to 1-6. Two points separates the sides. As the ball comes towards Michael Siggins, breaks it down. Paul Cullen pulls it to the set of Liam down there with Dean McDonald. But Liam wins this battle. He's coming away with the ball. And nice little swift stroke from Liam. Inside towards Martin Dempsey. Paul Dempsey there with him. Paul having a good game now for the ball of and Martin Dempsey still there. The ball going off across the big man, is it? No, the referee says, or the linesman, Noel Whelan says it was off uh, a now alert man. And he's given the line ball to cross the big. I thought it came off across the big man, but Noel indicates that it's going to be a cross the big ball. It looked from here like it came off the cross the big player, but... The linesman says no, it's going to be across the big ball. Fairly coming. 
gets well under this one. Up towards Thierman, right down again. Thierman breaks it down, leans down right there with him. But Thierman succeeds in flicking it away towards John Cummins. John's trying to get into his hand. He's been followed the whole way by RJ Blake. The ball towards John Russell. Paul Cullen gets the better of it. The ball coming to John Cummins again. John gets the ball. Swings it out there to Paul Cullen. Paul won't pick this one up. He decides to whip it in first time along the ground. In there towards MJ Scallion, but it's John Stam covering off for the Arab men. John gets around MJ Scallion. He puts that ball. We're going back. Michael Chicken and Michael very cleverly knocking it down to Paul Cullen. Paul swings it inside. Now Kieran McDonald in. Tomorrow's done in there. Trying to get the ball. They all miss it. He's on the goal and he's. MJ Scallion, the man who finished it off. The outer defence there at six and seven. Tomorrow's done was backing in under and MJ Scallion was in to whip it into the net. Cross the leg into the lead. Ten and three quarter minutes almost gone in the second half. Two goals and six for Ballamore, and that's a total of 12. One goal in eight. A total of 11 for the Howler of the Ballock men. The book out by Paul Dempsey. Over there towards Brian O'Connor and the number 17, Pierce Redman. It's Brian O'Connor trying to win possession and won't come up. He pulls it along the ground. Over there towards Sean Dunn. It goes out to stick Sean Dunn out over the sideline. Tomas Dunn now appears to be hurling a fullback, a very unusual position for him. The left cornerback beyond. Jack De- 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 has gone off. The left cornerback beyond. Who? Oh, Philip Rosser. Philip Rosser at left cornerback. As I said, Tomas Dunn in a very unusual position for him, a fullback. As the ball comes to Pierce Redman. Pierce works it up there towards James Armand. James away on the solar run. Will he get the equaliser here for the Arab men? He swings it in. And he swings it wide. A bad wide there for the Arab men. And really, they'll have to call on all their extra powers now to get back into this game because they were coasting in the first half they literally owned the game but uh, they didn't press home their advantage with the scores when it counted and Cross the Big have capitalised on it and they're into the lead for the first time the ball there lobbing down towards Larry White having a fine game in the middle of the field gives it over to Paul Cullen Paul hits it low the ball added to by John Cummins in there towards Tyrone Mack a piece of George Stout comes out with gives it out towards Tomas Dunn Tyrone Mack Dunn trying to work it away but Tomas on the way on a solo run Tomas gives it up where Michael Chick is defending very well. What a game he's having. My man of the match for the Ballamore men so far. The ball he throws Michael Dawn. He misses it. John Stout covering off. John bringing it over towards the end line. Is it going to be him over the end line? It has. A 65 for the Cross the Beg men. Cross the Beg really alight at this stage. And tomorrow, a well known cliche taking the game with the scruff of the neck. It's going to be a 65 for the Cross the Beg men. And Niall McDonald, the man who's going to take it. As I say, Harley, a puff of breeze. And the Cross the Beg men playing into the. Town end goal, defending the Clonard end as Niall MacDonald comes to take this one. Will he be content to lob it in or will he go for the point? 12 and almost 13 minutes gone in the second half. Billy Kyo, has Billy Kyo gone off the field? Uh, we'll follow the play anyhow as Niall MacDonald comes to take this one. Niall swings it in and Niall sends it over the bar. Cross the bag into a two point lead. It must have been Billy Kyo went off that time for Lara O'Leary as. Uh, the Puck Eye once again to uh, the Owlet men to now find themselves two points behind. Cross the big, Ballamurn 2-7, Owlet the Ballock 1-8. The ball lobbing down Martin Story going high, can't hold it. Covering off there is uh, the number five, Brian O'Connor. It's uh, Jimmy White there and it's started to further out by Larry White. Uh, the ball comes there towards John Cleary. John giving it over to his midfield partner, John Rosser. John springs it in but again the ball going badly to the left and wide. That's a couple of wise Owlers have now when they really needed to score badly. Two points separate the sides. 13 and a half minutes gone. Many people believe that the experience of the Isle of the Ballock men would see them through here. Of course, the game a long ways from over. Tom Neville in there with a few words for Sean Dunn. Not quite sure why he'll be saying to him at the present time. As the ball there towards Philip Rosser. He's beaten to it, but it's uh, rooted out over the sideline by Tomas Dunn. And it's going to be a line ball to uh, cross the big Ballymore and over on the far side. And is it the midfielder? No, it's the number five, Brian O'Connor, the man who's coming to take it. Brian stepping well back, cuts a very good ball right in across the goal. Kieran Mack goes very high, Paul Dempsey leaves his goal. He's been followed inside and uh, Paul MJ Scallion it is, I think, down on the ground there. Shipped a very heavy tackle, it's going to be a free out. When play will resume, the referee Brian Weiss reckoned that the goalkeeper was being fouled. Of course, you can challenge the goalkeeper in the small square, but you can't. You can actually shield them, but you can't actually challenge them. As the way it goes, Brady Cullen on our lap of honour to attend to the cross the player who's down injured. But I'm sure the Alder Development mentors will be a little bit worried at this stage. We're almost halfway through the second half and Cross the Big Ballamorn enjoy a two point lead. The Alder men held a two point lead at half time but now find themselves two points behind. And Jess Gallion still down, being attended, of course. 
across the big Ballymurn being uh, managed and trained these days by that former great inter-county hurler, John Murphy. Out of the Bellica course with Tom Neville at the helm. It'll be a free out for uh, the Owlet men when play will resume. There's all kinds of switches now in the Owlet team. Martin's story has gone to full forward. Is that ironic? Martin went to full forward for Wexford in the Leinster final. They seem to be bringing him further away from play. However, we'll follow as Paul Cullen can't beat John Ross to this one. John away on a solo run. He plays it low inside. The ball coming where Niall MacDonald coming more and more into the game. With that ball up where it's uh, John Cummins. No, it's number 13, Michael Doyle. But he beats him down here and on the south over the sideline. It's going to be a line ball to Owlard and RJ Blake, the man who's going to take it. How Owler could do with the score at this stage, they're finding it very difficult to get back into the game as the ball comes towards Pierce Redman. Pierce looking for someone to give it to. Now the side he's fired in and set Martin Story inside. Back to Forrest Sussley first. Oh, and Martin Story connected in the air, but John Forrestley went off his stick and went wide. So it remains two goals and seven to one goal in eight. The cross the big men still enjoying a two-point lead. 14 minutes left in the game. 14 minutes between cross the big Ballymurn and the first ever appearance in a senior hurling Head its final. Eamon Cullen with a good puck, plenty of height and plenty of length over towards Lara O'Leary on the far side, being followed there by the number uh, 20 over there. Number 20 is Philip Rosser, it's going to be a line ball for the Owlet men down there and taken there towards James Orman. James swinging the ball across towards Martin uh, Redmond. Martin hasn't been quite as much in the game as he was in the first half. He's still going. He gives a good ball inside towards Jonathan Martin. It's Martin's story. Martin sends it high and Martin sends it over the bar. A point separates the sides again. Could we have a draw here? 17 minutes gone. 13 minutes remaining. A good point there and it was Martin Redman who set that one up. Martin now operating as half forward and Jonathan Martin gone into the full forward line. As is Martin's story, Sean Dunn appears to be operating way out the field even though he is a corner forward. He's sort of taken up a third midfield position. As uh, Dermot McDonald tries to flick the ball on. Sean Dunn, that man I was talking about a moment ago. He gives the ball in towards Jonathan Maiden. John been followed the whole way. Here's a chance of a goal. He gives the ball. Is he going to give the story? He thought he should. It's the goal. Jonathan Maiden there capitalising. And this was really the tactic of the outer men. Pulling out Sean Dunn and they made the space available. And there was Jonathan Maiden to rattle the net. It's two goals and nine to two goals and seven. The outer men enjoy a two-point lead again. As I say, the ploy of bringing Sean Dunn to midfield appears to be working. Owler back in the lead again. The ball poked out again. John Cummins under it there. Some high pulling over on the far side. Lean done defending well. It's added to further there. Philip Ross is trying to get to it. The ball there with John Cummins. Same net down there. Kieran Matt down there as well as Lean Dunn. Quickest react coming out with the ball. Being followed the whole way. Dean Matt Dunn flicks it away from him. It's Sean Dunn working way back deep in defence. The ball comes towards Michael Chickens. He got rid of it. Nine right down, tips it away to Paul Cullen. Paul being followed by Martin Redman. It's added to further there by Michael Doyle. There's a challenge off the ball. There's going to be a free in here. A push to the back by John Stamp on MJ Scallion as Michael Doyle ran into a heavy knock over there on the near side. It's going to be a free in. Well, did you tell me your man is over on the far side forever? That's not Victor's step, is it? Yeah, who's that over on the far side? You're 22 on him. But that's not hell enough, man. Yeah, for an example, I don't give it up. I don't know who he is. Oh, he's over there. Oh, he's over there. Oh, he's over there. Michael Doyle, a little bit of uh, uncertainty on the umpire there, but it uh, went wide. Not bad. The puck out. That's Henry Quigley, is it? It's uh, Martin Dempsey over there on the far side. Ripping the ball, he throws James Orman. Here come Albert again. Trying to press home on another touch. James Orman shoots and James sends it over the bar. 2-10 to 2-7, a goal separates the side. As I say, uh, not quite sure, but it appears that Henry Quigley is uh, operating at cornerback and Philip Roster appears to be out as a left half back. As I say, these numbers going all together straight with the Owler crowd today. I miss and breathe the flood for all that advice because 22 on the programme here says Alan O'Connor. It's definitely not Alan O'Connor. The ball sent in there. 
the referee telling the umpire it's wide and wide it is, 210 to 27. The Arab men really get in their team moving now, just 10 minutes between them and a the county final appearance. Three points separate the sides as Paul Dempsey comes to take the puck out once again. Cross the bag took over for long stages in the second half, but Arab right back into it again and back into the lead after that great goal from Jonathan Mighton. The ball blocked down. The ball coming towards Kieran McDonald. Kieran playing it low inside towards Brother D. D trying to get a better lean done. He's been followed the whole way. Covering back, now it's lean done. Covering back there now with uh, number seven, Tomas, which challenges him first. And the ball comes to the ball stone. Tomas with a long relieving clearance. Up towards young Jonathan Mighton again. But the ball is very well grabbed by Faley Cummins. Faley gets his clearance in. It's all alone towards a narrow man, Philip Rosser. But covering back there is lean done. Lean wins the ball and it's won by James Ormond over here. James swinging it across towards the number 13, Martin Redman. Martin quite hold on to this one. He whips it back over towards this side to feet towards John Roster. John being followed the whole way by Paul Cullen. John Roster still gets it. He's trying to get around him. He hand passes it in. Comes to Pierce Redman. Pierce gives it in towards Jonathan Maiden with his nine McDonald. Quickest three out there and now he gets in a long relieving clearance. Up there towards John Cummins and uh, Henry Quigley. Henry coming out with the ball with John Cummins who gains possession. John tried to get it into his hand to walk him up. Covering over on the far side is a Philip Roster. It is, but the ball comes to Dearman McDonald. Dearman springs it back into the set again. In towards uh, uh, Kieran McDonald. Kieran gets it into his hand. He's trying to break through. His shot's blocked out. He's still there. Tossing away for John Stab pulling it out of the ground. Towards Thomas Stone. Thomas Stone getting it into his hand. He's fired by Lara O'Leary. A free out there is John Stab Kent towards Lara O'Leary. A little bit of aggro off the ball there, but Howard are going to win themselves a free out. Willie Sunderland, the forward great Howard Hurler, running down the sideline, I think. Um, Willie Sunderland is a mentor, I think, with the team. It's going to be a free out to Elder when play will resume anyhow. There's an Elder player down injured. Tom Neville in there with another few words of instruction. He seemed to do very well in sending Sean Dunn way out around the middle of the field and making plenty of room and space inside. But Crossabag by no means out again yet. There's eight minutes still left. An Elder player down injured. This is Liam Dunn, the number six it is. Name down up and recovered, it's going to be a free out to the older men. And the free, uh, he must have given it from where the ball landed because the free, the foul was coming way inside, but it must have been a late tackle as Paul Delsey comes and takes the free. It's not a very long one. I thought James Allen, but Larry White wins possession. Larry is still coming away with it. He's been followed the whole way, chopped down there by uh, now the player, I think that player was Henry Quigley, as I say, that's number 22, if it's not Henry Quigley, well it's not my fault, as I say, badly missing breed of flood today, but we'll follow the play anyhow, it's going to be a free to cross the big and who's going to take a nine McDonald? now will he be contented to go for a point, or will he lob it in around the goal, seven minutes left for play, Niall taking this one almost on the halfway line, a little bit in from the far sideline, Niall lifts and strikes, and the ball gone badly wide, perhaps it would have been better lobbing that one in around the goal mount, but that's the way it goes, he went for the point, he didn't get it, so three points still separate the sides. Six and a half minutes left plus injury time. As Paul Dempsey steps back behind his goal again. Sean Don moving in that little bit nearer to the goal now, perhaps he's done the job he was put to do, the ball towards Martin Redmond down there, was broken down, Michael Shiggins coming away for the cross of big men. Whips it up there, John Stamp coming to the ball with MJ Scallion. He gets the better of MJ on this occasion. Larry Leary going high. The ball added to it's RJ Blake for Owlers. Not a very good clearance. It comes towards Martin. Uh, Redmond, Martin gets the ball, but he's locked down. D. McDonald freezes his side. Kieran McDonald again. In with Tomas Stone. Tomas taking no chance this time. There's a long ground. With the ball to Kieran again. He's got it on the 21 yard line. He shoots. Comes back out the uprights. John Stamp in there. They're tossing away. The ball towards Michael Doyle. Michael trying to get into his hand. He succeeds. He's around and he's not in shoots low. And Paul Dempsey with a very fine save. The ball going up off his hurley over the bar. But Kieran McDonald never saw dangerous inside. Tomas Stone half slipped as he tried to get him to clearance. There's two points separating the sides again. Six minutes left for play. Plenty of time for Cross the to get back into this game. Two points separates the sides as Paul Dempsey takes the puck. Out there towards the centre of the field. Well, Larry White has had one hell of a game. But it's the number 17, Pierce Simmons, gets in his puck. It's not a very long one. Comes to Brian O'Connor. Cross the bag, hurling way above the centre at this stage. As the ball inside towards the number 12, Paul Cullen. Kira McDonald out there. Plays inside. Paul Cullen in possession. The ball coming towards Steve McDonald. Steve Cullen buried down on goal again. He's got a chance here. He fires over another great point. 
just one point that we're in the size. Cross the bank coming again. This is probably going to be a fierce, exciting game. 210 to 29. One point that we're in the size. Heaven forbid that we're going to have a draw here. If we do, we probably won't have a county final before Christmas. However, it's a pretty good game, and I suppose it's the type of game that everybody would like to see again. It's just one point that we're in the size. Paul Nelson coming to take the puck again. Down towards Lawrence O'Leary. The number six, Niall Batdall goes high. Martin Redmond is there as well. Martin Story is out. Where's the ball of Murnman? Who in possession again? Larry White flings it inside. Henry Quinty comes to Paul Cullen. The ball going inside. Off the stick of uh, Paul Cullen is Michael Doyle. Michael going one way and then unfortunately for him it didn't work out. It's John Roster down there on the John pulling his car over the sideline and line ball to the ball of Murnman. Number 10, Michael Chick is going to take it almost 26 minutes gone. There's another substitute in for Ballamurn. It's the number 18, and uh, 18 here says uh, John Murphy. John, of course, the son of the legendary John. Only a minor player, of course, appeared with Wexford in Crow Park in the Leinster Championship in goal. Hadn't the happiest of days on that occasion, but a very prolific score from the corner forward position. It's a line ball, John and Niall McDonald's going to take it. It's a great ball from Niall. It's going to break inside. The ball blocked out. Very heavy pressure, and this side the ball goes wide. Cross the bags, tried to press home another attack. 26, four minutes left, plus added on time. I said there'll be very little added on time should Cross the Bay get the equaliser, because in fairness to both sides, of course, uh, at that late stage of the game, it uh, will possibly be the best result. The goalkeeper Paul Dempsey, not in any great hurry at all to take the puck out. Just one point, as I say, separating the sides. This is going to be a vital ball. Who's going to win it? It's down there towards the number 12, Martin Story. Way out the field again. It's uh, on, over there, uh, Philip Rossum with Martin Story, winning valuable possession for Elvis. Up there between Larry White and uh, Martin. Uh, Red minute breaks between them. Larry White quickest to react again. He gets the ball. He tries to hand pass it away. Owler tried to press home an attack, but it's clear by Faley Cummins. It's going to be a line ball on this occasion to the Owler men. Is it Martin Story who's going to take it? Martin has played just about everywhere around that forward line and centre field today. He's now operating way out the field as this line ball through the outlet men. Martin has been known to cut over some good line balls. He's done it again this year in the Leinster Championship. I think it was against Leash or somebody. It's a good ball again. The ball broken down. Paul Dempsey, quickest three out there. It's inside. Oh. The ball got into the net. It has the number 10, Martin Dempsey. And that's probably shot across the base ball. Martin Dempsey, the number 10 who finished it off. And there it is, three goals and ten for Dowler at the ballot, two goals and nine for Cross the Big Ballamurn. It's a four points lead, it should be enough to see Dowler men through. The ball breaking down, grabbing that ball is John Cummins. John going through, he's not fouled, Martin Story back there. The ball still played inside, lead done, reacting there. Cross the Big tries to launch home another attack. This is a little bit of off the ball, Agro going on with the ball, Stoddard, Kieran McDonald. And the referee slowing things down, uh, he's bought both players in a little bit of an off the ball instantly he's taken both their names and uh, play will resume with a throw in I'd imagine on the 21 yard line as play was developing over there but out of the ballot looked to be in the driving seat now just two points separate or two minutes separating them from a county final appearance four points between the sides 28 minutes gone we should have a little bit of added on time there was a few injuries but unless Cross the Bay can uh, get a goal rather quickly they're as good as out of this game at this stage but they've put up one good hell of an effort as a throw in ball here on McDonald and Tomas Dunn. Stay on the there, but the Arab men who work it away. Will cross the back, try to press home another attack. Nile McDonald. Nile appeared to be fired, but Martin Story wins possession. The ball coming back with Sean Dunn, working way back deep in the fence. He's had a hell of a good game. Here's Paul Dempsey all on his own. Paul going very high. Alludes two would be tackles. He's slow to get rid of it. He's tackled by Martin Raymond, and then he just succeeds in building it out. That's not exactly what the cross the back would have had in mind there. He should have had that ball gone back down the field, but he didn't succeed in getting it out. There's just one minute left, and it looks like Alder the Ballock are on their way to their first county senior hurley final since uh, 92, was it? I'm not quite sure, or was it a little bit further back? However, they're on their way to a county final now. It looks like it's a line ball over on the far side. Martin Story again going to take it. James Orman making a big impact since he came into the game. Very youthful player, of course, with loads of speed. It's the number 21, Jonathan Mighton out there with the thinking of a quick ball perhaps and Martin says no we'll have none of his swings it in covering off there uh, for the Barry Murn men is it uh, Billy Kyo back in the game again no we'll follow the play over there anyhow Niall McDonald hustling away with Martin Story breaks between them coming out to the ball Story again gains possession he gives a good ball out to John Roster Roster shoots high and Roster shoots over the bar another point for the Ireland men 
and Jonathan Maiden, a very excited Jonathan Maiden there as John Roster tipped that one over the bar. We're going into added on time now, 3.11 to 2.9, a five points lead and at this stage Elrod have taken over. Liam Dunn moving way up the field. This is Elrod at the very best now. They'll be anxious to get this game over with now as Martin Dempsey fires in another one and Martin fires it over the bar. Put together an awfully tight revival here from the Elrod men, only they came a lot earlier than awfully did and at this stage they're well on their way to the county finals, 3.12 to 2.9. A six points lead and the referee Brian White at any moment now should be turning the final whistle. The ball there towards Kira McDonald, Nile McDonald covering back. He's there with Pierce Redmond, it breaks between them. It just woke him up. Story there again in possession is uh, Pierce Redmond. Pierce swinging a very, very high ball. Paul Debs the under it again. Paul just bats this one down. It's Larry White, he's set his heart out, pulls it on the ground. Out there towards uh, the number 10, Michael Shiggins is it over there. Michael gets the ball in, but. Howard with possession again, a good ball to Sean Dunn. He's had an excellent game. He sidesteps two McDonald's there on this occasion as he gives the ball to Pierce Redmond. Pierce swings it in him and Cullen coming from his goal, grabbing the ball in his hand. A good, long, high, relieving clearance. Way down. Howard defending in numbers now as Liam Dunn breaks it out to brother Sean. Sean away, being followed by D. McDonald. The referee says that that shoulder was illegal from Niall McDonald. It's going to be a free out. The Owler, Mazur, Tommy, I, I forget why his second name is, went spitting across the field there to attend to the injured Owler player. It's going to be a free out to Owler anyhow and play will resume. And Liam Dunn, the man who's going to take it, but we're now almost 32 minutes into this second half. And any moment now this whistle should sound and Owler the ballot will have qualified for the 1994 County Wexford Senior Hurling Championship Final. The ball beating everybody over the sideline. Brian White still prolongs it. But as far as the match is uh, well and truly over. Brian blows the final whistle and the final score here from the 1994 Pettit Senior Hurling Championship semi-final. Owler de Bellock, three goals and 12 points. Cross the bag, Ballymore, two goals and nine. This is Willie Wickham saying bye-bye from Wexford Park. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're the best.